Okay, we're ready to begin with the gear train. Uh, there's a lot going on here, so I'll take you through the, the sequence of steps that I use to put everything together, and then uh, we'll go from there. So first thing I'll do is install the new little roller clutch into the, into the front planet. So you want to install the roller clutch this side up, okay? The side, um, you know, with the cam cutouts faces down. And yes, they do like to come out. So you gotta be real careful. Generally, these will not just drop in via gravity. You do got to persuade them a little bit. But once it's in, you know, it's more or less done. You can check with the center support. And when it's installed correctly, the center support will freewheel counterclockwise and lock clockwise. Next, lube up your bearings. This one's going to be output to uh, rear ring gear. And then this one's going to be the rear ring gear to the sun gear. So take your, your ring gear and intermediate shaft. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your top hat style race and you're going to seat it like so. Then your bearing. And then your top race. So it'll look like this. Next, you're going to take the wider race that you see here. So this is the wide race. This is a little bit more narrow. The top hat race will actually be the top race for the ring gear to sun gear thrust bearing. Then take your bearing, drop it in, and then drop in your top race. So it'll look like this. Now what you're going to do, you're going to take your output shaft. Output shaft's gonna go like so into the ring gear. Lube up your bushings. And take your planet. and your four tab washer. Now this washer is selective. And what it does is it sets the clearance or, or travel between the rear planet and the front planet. So we're gonna inspect that once the gear trains all together and we're gonna see what kind of travel we have. So lay it upside down like this. Drop in your intermediate shaft and ring gear. Drop in your output shaft. And then install your snap ring. And of course, if you're wearing gloves like I am, try not to get the gloves snagged in the snap ring.
So as I mentioned, we are going to be deleting this four tab Babbitt washer. Otherwise, if you were not rollerizing the rear case, you're going to reuse that. You would stick it right here. So the next thing you're going to do is install the sun gear and the sun gear shaft as one. So lube up your bushing on each side. And lube up the journals also. So before you install this, you want to make sure that your orientation is correct and the two holes in both the sun gear and the sun gear shaft line up. Okay, this is what you want to see. If they don't line up, then you're going to have a, a lubrication starvation issue in the back of the case here, and that'll cause all kinds of problems. Just carefully install it. And you want to make sure that it, you know, it doesn't come out, you know, they don't come out of mesh with each other during the installation. And if they do, you just double check. Next is going to be your, your uh, planet, but what you need to do first is install your silencer ring if it came with one. So that goes here. And then your planet. Now you're going to put your bearing in. So this is the uh, bottom race. Drop it in. Bearing itself. Should have done this before, but you could take time now to lube the bushing and the center support and lube up the bushing in the center support as well as the inner race and then just carefully lower the support and mesh it with the sprag or technically it's a low roller clutch All right, so now we're gonna check two clearances that aren't often mentioned in the, uh, the service manuals and literature that are available for the TH400 480Es. And they are the um, low planet to high planet clearance, as well as the forward hub to direct drum clearance. So to check the clearance between the two planets, what you wanna do is just grab the, uh, the high planet like this, put your thumbs on the, on the center support, and then lift up on the front planet until it comes in contact with the center support. And what you're really looking for this is going to be mostly by feel, but what you're really looking for is between seven and 15 thousandths worth of travel. And again, uh, that should feel like next to nothing. So when you lift up, that's going to be your travel. So just like this. Now this looks like it's about 40 or 50 thousandths worth of travel, maybe more. That's, that's a lot of clearance and a lot of movement between uh, the low planet and the high planet. So to mitigate that, what we're going to do is first take the, the Babbitt washer that normally goes 
right here on the rain gear on the underside, and we're gonna swap it in place of the plastic selective washer that is in there now. So just carefully disassemble the gear train. And what I do is I'll hold the, the sun gear shaft in place so I don't, you know, accidentally lift it out while I'm taking out the center support. Then the front planet. And a little bearing will come out. And then just take like a uh, pick or something and then grab the, the selective washer in place down here and just take it out. So I'll take a quick measurement of the washer, see how thick it is. So it looks like it's about 60 thousandths. And then we'll measure the bronze washer. And this is the same 60 thousandths. So we need to take up additional clearance. So what we could do is use some shims. So I got two shims here and you saw these earlier on the bench. Each of these shims is going to measure 15 thousandths each. So what I'm going to do is install them into the planet so that we can tighten up that clearance. Gonna raise you up a little bit. And you can kind of see down in, and there it is. And then just put everything back together and we'll recheck. Hey, it looks like we can stand to add a couple more shims. All right, so I have everything reassembled. We took out the one additional shim, and then uh, here's, here's where we're going to end up. That's probably either 15 thousandths, maybe 20 thou, but uh, honestly, I don't have any thinner shims than that. I don't know where I would get them. Uh, this is a lot better. There's a lot less slop between these two gears than there was when we initially started. So I'm going to call this good for now. I don't think that it, you know it's going to be a problem when it goes back in, especially on a, on a, on a car that's not going to be raced. If this was a full race setup, then uh, I would probably have some machining done or, or buy some custom you know, thickness shims to get this dialed in just perfect. But 
um, for a street cruiser, something that's not going to be beat on, this should be fine. All right, so the next thing we need to do is measure the clearance between the forward clutch hub and the direct drum. So I'm going to install the, the direct drum. Let me move you out a little bit. Make sure it's fully seated onto that uh, sun gear shaft. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the forward hub. And then same deal, you're gonna lift up on the drum while holding the hub. That feels like it's about maybe 25 to 30 thousandths. I wanna see if I can tighten it up just a little bit. So uh, let me see if I can locate a couple of, uh, a couple of selective washers for that forward hub and then uh, we'll resume. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anything. I mean, this is a little bit more play than I would like, but again, I don't feel it's the end of the world. So we'll uh, we'll roll with this and then uh, proceed with putting everything into the case. All right, we're almost ready to start putting things back into the case. Uh, there's a few things that we need to do first to prep it. Uh, one of those is going to be to install the rear bushing and uh, we'll go ahead and install the select shaft seal and then uh, the band and the um, case saver ring for the center support. When I say band, I'm referring to the low reverse band, not the intermediate band. That comes later. I'm going to drive the old bushing out and then install the new one. And because we're going to rollerize the rear case, I want to install the bushing so that it protrudes into the case just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so and that will allow the bearing to locate or give something the bearing to locate on. So normally you drive it in flush so it's perfectly even with the bore like so, but in this case, we're going to drive it in just a little bit below, uh, beyond flush. And let's go ahead and test fit the bearing. So what you want to see is the bearing locating, but at the same time, you do not want the bushing to be uh, beyond the surface of the bearing like so. And this is how it's going to go in the case. The silver side is going to be up. And the reason for that is you do not want the bearing as it's rotating to come in contact with the bushing. Otherwise, you know, it might start to cut into the bushing. Install your dipstick tube seal. With the selector shaft seal, you wanna be real straightforward with this. So sit it in its location as square as you can and then punch it in. Install your rear band. 
line up the band anchor tabs with the band anchors on the case. and then install your case saver ring. And you want the uh, snap ring opening right here at the nine o'clock position relative to the bottom of the case. And this is the bottom of the case. So I have you at nine o'clock, so it'll look like it's six o'clock from your vantage point. All right, so what we need to do before we can install anything else is measure the thickness of the, the four tab washer that uh, normally goes on the uh, bottom of the, uh, of the ring gear and then the three tab selective steel washer that goes at the very bottom of the case. All right, so it looks like this is coming out at 147 thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna take that number and we're gonna measure our bearing. This is the TH350 pump bearing that we're gonna be installing along with these shims. So I'll install them together, or I'll install them together, I'll measure them together so we got 40 thousands plus the bearing, and then we wanna see how close we can get to that original number to start off with. So this looks like it's given us 177 thou. So we're about 20 thou too thick. So let's see what the 15 thou shim by itself will look like with the bearing. And we're about 154, 155 thousandths. So I think I'm going to start there. And then we'll see what the end play looks like once we have the gear train all in. All right, with the bearing and 15 thou shim in, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the gear train in. Just wanna make sure that your center support feed bolt holes lined up with the corresponding uh, hole in the case at six o'clock. but you don't want to install it just yet. All you want to do is install the center support snap ring. Same deal with this thing. You want it, the ends at the nine o'clock position and the opening between the lugs. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point because it's gonna come out again. Now I'm gonna set up a dial indicator in here so that we can measure the rear end play. And then uh, we'll maneuver the camera so that you can see what's going on. Got the dial indicator set up, we're ready to take an end play reading. So what I'll do is take a long screwdriver and insert it right underneath the uh, ring gear and then just pry upwards on it until I can't, you know, until I can't travel any further. So it looks like about 12 and a half 
thousand since I'm not quite returning to zero. Uh, let me zoom in, get a better view of the indicator itself. Yeah, it looks like about 11.5 to 12,000, which is perfect. Okay, we can move on to uh, installing the feed bolt and then installing that cup plug to block off the reverse feed passage uh, for the dual feed mod. Before I do that, I'm going to pull uh, the gear train out so I can soak that bearing in fluid, and then once I put everything back together, we'll resume. All right, on to the feed bolt. This is going to be a 12.38 cinch socket. And it gets 22 pounds of torque once it's all seated. Now the little cup plug for the for the reverse feed circuit. And I like to use a little bit of Loctite on this plug. And this just helps ensure that there's absolutely no leaks or problems. 3 8 cup plug. Seat it until it bottoms out on the center support. Let's see if I can give you a little bit better view of that. And that's what it looks like when it's installed. All right, gonna flip the case back upright and then we'll proceed with the rest of the stuff and then um, get everything put back in and ultimately finish this build today.